Last Oasis has just celebrated its two year anniversary last week, but why has the game gone so silent? Where is the content? Where is the info? Is this game on its last chance with season five? The good, the bad, the story so far of Last Oasis development, let's go. Game dev is super hard. Balancing the game, especially for our early access and keeping players informed can be a real challenge, especially for a PVP MMO style game. Given that Last Oasis and Donkey Crew were never really backed by a massive company, they did a great job hyping up the game before release. Launch had its problems, but they did manage to maintain a decent little player base for a while. We'll go through the current population of Last Oasis in a minute. But it's fair to say, like many other early access survival games, they did start experiencing a drop in players and it's just got worse and worse. Sure, there's been peaks that have celebrated different seasons launching, but with each season they've seen diminishing returns. They've not actually had a actual seasonal content drop since August last year. That's nearly eight months ago. And if you scroll through any of their social media accounts or even go through some of their Discord posts, you'll be lucky to find more than two actual confirmations that season five was coming at all. It's just not good enough and it's what's prompted me to make this video. I'm not always the best at relaying an opinion over Discord or Twitter, but I did join the official Last Oasis Discord, or I've been in there a while, and certainly voiced my opinions about the fact that devs should be talking more. But since then, nothing has really improved. If you've never heard of Last Oasis, it's available on PC and Xbox. It's a PvP eccentric survival game where you will be challenged with surviving in harsh environments on different tiles that act as servers or maps. You can transfer from one tile or map to another and you can even migrate as some of these tiles and maps will actually burn up. The main focus is on water and resources. Water basically gives you replenish points where you'll be able to respawn on your walkers or on your bases to fend off against other clans as well as gathering other resources to make better weapons, armors and more. It's a game I was very hyped for and excited for. I covered all the way through its development when it first got announced and I covered it a big bunch when it launched. But like most early access games, I can't really stick with these too long, as they often can't pull in the kind of views that I want because not many people are that interested in them. That's no slight on Last Oasis, this happens with pretty much any survival game in the last few years. Only a few are managing to keep a player base going and keep players actually watching. But Last Oasis certainly had a bunch of issues when it launched. Namely, their servers just weren't right. It did put off a whole bunch of people with lots of refunds, and basically big complaints about the infrastructure. They ended up returning like a week later after many false restarts and problems and issues. And from there on, it started to get a little bit more stable slowly over time. The concept that separates Last Oasis from every other survival game is their walkers. That's the idea anyway. Instead of running around on dinosaurs, or facing off against zombies, you control these massive walkers. A whole variety of different styles, with many more being added throughout the last two years, giving opportunities to build bases on moving structures, going from one oasis tile to another and trying to solve the problem of offline raiding, traveling from one oasis tile to another, gathering resources and hopefully defending yourself against other clans. The combat was directional, very much similar to like chivalry, and they were promising a diverse environment where you'd be able to sell your resources, maybe trade, and obviously, yes, do battle against other big clans. Last Oasis hasn't actually got a terribly bad score. Considering the problems it started with, it has picked up more positive notes over the time. I distinctly remember this being in the red, but it's now mixed overall, and in the last 30 days, it's actually got 70% of its users saying it's a good game. That's really not a bad score for a game that's maybe struggled for content, Last Oasis has a bunch of issues, and I can't sit here and promise that I'm an expert since I only really jumped in after the initial launch just for the Xbox launch that happened pretty much a year and a bit afterwards. But what I can gather, there's still not enough content focused around PvE activities, meaning there's not much to do other than try and zerg and gank other players. And that was the criticism I had of my review when the game did actually launch. So what's the problem? Last Oasis seemingly has updates incoming, They've got roughly decent scores considering. Peak amount of players on a daily basis is around 500, so that does mean there are still a good couple thousand possibly logging in every single day to try Last Oasis out. But MMOs like these, they need more players, they need more new ones constantly coming in. Well, they wouldn't be the only ones to struggle. Games like Daisy and even Rust hit really low points, 
And I do try and do this a lot. I compare one game to another just to give some context and show that I'm not trying to make a hate bait video. I'm trying to be fair and balanced. And when you look at comparisons to something like Scum, which sold a million copies within a month, but then quickly lost nearly 80% of that player base in just four weeks, it was a sudden big departure and drop. And Last Oasis actually had a more gentle curve. Despite all its problems and issues, it did manage to maintain a relatively good amount of players. But it didn't last long enough. And soon before you knew, before the next update of season was announced, it dropped 700 players on a daily basis. With each season they do wipe, so all your progress gets pretty much dismantled. And with the inclusion of Xbox support, they pretty much added self-contained servers that were separate from the rest. The idea being to give maybe Xbox players, which were there, a chance to learn how to play the game without getting rolled over by the bigger clans. They did implement some of these servers for PC players to play as well, as the game is crossplay. This was positive and negative. For long time players it was negative because it meant less players to go and take on, but the positives were there for players to learn how to play the game without being overwhelmed by the swathes of massive Zerg clans going around. There was a constant battle between lots of big clans when I was playing it at launch and them clans have stuck with the game so they pretty much dominate even if their numbers aren't as big as they used to be. Alongside the mechanical changes to servers and implementing the influx of players from Xbox they also saw a huge amount of content added in terms of more walkers, more ways to defend your walkers whether it be new armaments, new weapons, new armors and even new technology like exosuits and wing gliders. That kind of process, that kind of influx of content and keeping engaged with your player base seemed to me really mark out Last Oasis as something to really get behind. With Season 4 that launched in August, they added much better different server types and the ability to host your own servers more properly. Up until that point, you had to use maybe rentable servers or it just wasn't very friendly in doing it yourself. And with Season 4, they went back to their old approach of having more connected world getting rid of a lot of them kind of beginner start servers and asking everyone to play on the same network. This was what a lot of the hardcore and longer term players kind of wanted, so it seemed to be in a good position. All throughout its early access and obviously before, they'd done lots of dev blogs showcasing all sorts of upcoming content, walkers, new enemy types, resources, weapons and more. And they carried on that vein all throughout the first year of early access. But something switched back in that August and September with the launch of Season 4. The devs, I think, have had a bit of criticism, as you would expect with any PvP game, and they seemingly not been able to separate the criticism and not take it personally. Maybe they also underestimated the toxicity of a PvP crowd, but effectively, they've gone dark since then, only muttering a few little sentences here and there in Discord, murmurings about Season 5 is going to be great, but not revealing a single concept or piece of art, not a single clue about what it may contain, and really not a lot going on. It's such a shame. I would love to support Last Oasis more, but I can't support a game developer that doesn't keep its players updated. They celebrated their two year birthday with a simple little gif that was on March the 26th, and apart from highlighting some of their Ukrainian team members and the stories they've got to tell about obviously the problems and issues that are going on in Ukraine, their only tweets or updates have been talking about either putting the game on sale back in January or a few maintenance updates back in October and November. I do believe there were a couple in January. And that is it. Not a single post anywhere talking about anything else since August. And that is just not good enough. It's not just Twitter either. Across the social media, whether it be Reddit, Instagram or any of the other places that they were very active, they've gone absolutely dark. It's commendable that they've given some time and maybe some access to some of the Ukrainian members to tell their story about being invaded by Putin. This is a worthy cause and absolutely this is something developers should be doing. But that has only happened in the last month or so. There's no real excuse why they hadn't given any info up until that point. So they can't really hide behind that fact. I truly do want Last Oasis to succeed. I was one of the first YouTubers to really talk it up and big it up and make countless videos talking about the progress and updates they'd had. But it's just baffling to me why they've kind of killed their own game. Sure, if the criticism was becoming too much, maybe personal, maybe they felt like it just unescapable. No matter what they did, no matter what they showed, people maybe weren't reacting enough or in a good way to it. But that only ever really works going dark in a few cases. 
Think No Man's Sky after their launch and how they disappeared for nearly seven months before coming back with some big major updates. But early access is different. You've got to be able to take the actual blows, turn that negativity into something positive, or go ahead and just ignore it and carry on with your plans. There should be no reason why they've not been doing dev blogs. Twitter posts or even messages in Discord actually showing some of the new content incoming. Doesn't mean you have to reveal everything, but as a game that is in early access, you absolutely should be showing more. They said they wanted the game to be in early access up to two years. Well, it's two years now and seemingly nowhere close to actually having a full release. I won't moan too much on that. There's plenty of games out there that have been in early access a long time. But what they absolutely owe the players that have bought and supported their game is communication and not just by a few random messages when they feel like it in Discord. Get your social media managers working. If you forbid them to talk for whatever stupid reason, change that plan right now and start talking about future content. It doesn't have to be in detail. Just show off a new walker, show off some new armor, show off some new items, leave the actual mechanics until you're ready and then go to town. It's okay to not have content updates. It's not okay not to talk to your fans. There are some major problems with Last Oasis, and like I said, I'm not a massive expert, but again, what I can gather through scanning through the Reddit and Discord is a lot of people saying there's over-reliance on some of the late game technology that makes it a bit one-sided when you get to that point, and players actually like the more primitive versions or early stages of the game. They also feel like there's a lot of filler content being added in that doesn't really add much value. And as ever, there's a long-term issues with cheating and particularly easy cheesy methods with combat. That's something every game faces. But yeah, the biggest one I've seen is the lack of PvE. You can't just have a game purely running as a PvP game unless it's something like Rust. You do need something to set it aside, more focus on trading, give incentives not to always just go and gank other tribes or clans, give players more to do. And that was something that Last Oasis really sorely lacked. I love the concept of Last Oasis. I thought it could be the answer to PvP problems and issues about being raided offline. You take your walkers off the desert and you're pretty much safe. But they did implement ways that you'd have land bases and they messed around with different types of timers and stuff that stopped you maybe escaping. But I feel like they're nearly there. It could be the answer for a lot of other games that struggle with this like Ark or Conan. Latest I hear from Discord, as I said, a few broken little messages is that Season 5 is on its way and they originally were going to plan to announce its release date in early March. They decided to give that time to their Ukrainian colleagues, but it's beginning of April now. You were silent for literally six months before then, it's time to actually start talking to your community. Otherwise, this may be the last update you can generally do without losing all of your players. When you look at these charts, particularly the green line with Last Oasis. You might think it's a terrible state and the game is already dead. And there's definitely an argument for that. But again, when you look at Scum and the way that that also spent nearly a year and a half, nearly two years with just really low numbers compared to what it launched with. But now it's turning a corner. They've had more frequent updates. The updates have been more chunky, adding whole new ways to play the game. And it's recently had one of its best ever player peaks with its latest update focusing on aeroplanes. This is the kind of thing that Last Oasis should be taking notice of, looking at what the Scum developers did. So what did Scum do? Well, they've done what they've always done. They've kept their community involved. They posted consistently, giving previews, clips, GIFs, messages on social media of everything that would be incoming. They tried to do their best to give realistic timelines about what to expect. Dev streams, dev blogs, incorporating YouTubers, doing interviews and much more. This is what the Donkey Crew should be looking to for inspiration on how to keep your community involved. Not only that, but surely you want to actually get more people buying your game. You can't just be relying on purely the review scores on the actual Steam page. Being outward, talking about your game in all different ways on social media, getting involved with the community more, is a great way to show that even if your game is lacking at the moment, you're heading in the right direction. I am really hoping Last Oasis pull out of this slump It'd be really good to hear why they've gone silent for nearly eight months. I do feel like whatever they're going to say, it is just going to be an excuse. Maybe they feel like season five will solve everything and show everyone how hard they've been at work. But if they plan on more seasons afterwards, they've got to learn from this experience. 
they are sick and tired of dealing with issues themselves, then hire more community managers or invest more in PR teams that can help out. That's what a community team I imagine is meant to do, feel the good, give you the constructive feedback and help you keep a barrier so that you can carry on working without too much interruption. Hey, I'm even looking for a job. If you want help with community management, I am all ears. Fingers crossed I'll be able to report something more positive in the next few weeks. And when season five does launch, I will be looking to give it a shot in some live streams. I want Last Oasis to succeed. I don't want it to be just another dead game. And I'm praying that season five really will deliver. Let me know your thoughts about Last Oasis. When was the last time you played it? Have you thought about picking it up? What do you think about the lack of news and updates? Let me know in the comment section down below. And I'll be back for a more detailed look at your favorite survival games in early access soon.